We have shown the motivations and the foundation from the view of optimization. Here, we will provide an introduction to variance normalization methods. Firstly, I will show the methods for how to normalize the activation. As illustrated before, normalized input is performed of the four data set, usually as a pre-process for improving the condition of optimization problem. It is straightforward to normalize the activations in different networks over the four data set using the combination statistics. However, different to normalizing the input, normalize the activation in deep neural networks is more challenging. The main reason is that, first, the optimization is usually over the stochastic or mini batch gradients, not the full gradient, which requires more efficient statistical estimations. The second reason is that the internal covariance shift, that is, the distribution of the internal activation variance with the learning progressing. Be because the activation is based on the previous previous weights, if the if the weights changes, the distribution of activation also changes. These two points makes makes normalizing the activation difficult and have more diversity. The existing method try to normalize the activations by the population statistics of, of the activations over the four data sites. For example, standard, standard activation for deep Boltzmann machine. This method maintains the ex expectation mean and view it as parameters to be estimated of data sites. The main difference is the main differences of this method is how to update the expect, expected the parameters. There are also methods consider standardizing the activations and view the mean and the variance of the parameters to be estimated over the data set. Further, uh, digesting the atom and the new proposed to whiten the activation by using the population statistics of the whitening matrix. This method pioneered the way to normalize the activation and why exploit the beneficial property of normalization in optimization. However, there are also some substance drawbacks. The main disadvantage is the instability. Because the estimation is not accurate, this method usually uses some of the data to go forward to estimate the parameters. Besides, the key reason of this instability is the internal covariance shift problem. Even though one can get a, get an accurate esti estimation of the parameters in current iteration, the distribution will change during the optimization. Consequently, the estimation will not be accurate. Owing to that, the inaccurate estimation will amplify with the in Increasement of the needs. This method cannot be applied to large networks. For example, some people have pointed out that a standardization has worse performance than century when doing normalization in such a global way. Interestingly, there are a large network for normalizing the internal representation in computer vision communities. These methods boost the contrast in the regions where it is low or moderate, while leaving it unchanged where it is high. One important characteristic of this method is that the statistics for each example or position are calculated over the neighboring regions, and thus, these statistics were very very. This kind of normalization is also called local normalization. Jarity et al. proposed local contrast normalization. This, mo this module performs local sub subtractive and divisible, divisible normalizations. 
enforce a sort of, of local com com competition between the jazz and the futures in the future map. And between futures at the same spatial location in different in different future maps. Local response normalization proposes to only scale the activation across uh, the age agent color maps at the same spatial position. That is, it only calculates the variance along the channel directions. De divisible normalization generalizes the neighborhood pa partition of this local normalization method as the choices of the summation and the separation fields. It is more like a general framework. Local context normalization extends the neighborhood partition where the normalization is performed within a window size of size p times q for groups of filters with a size with a size predefined by the number of channels per group along the channel axis. Notice that there are two main characteristics of the local normalization methods. The first one is that the normalization operation is performed only on one example, especially for the image or its future maps. The second is the statistics for each position are calculated of its neighboring regions and are varying. The local normalization methods have some good advantages in training. For example, the training is somewhat stable due to backpropagating back through the normalization transformation. Besides, the model is capable is capable to learn the visual contrast invariant property, which may benefit the generalization. However, these methods have some limits. The motivation of the methods are spe specific to visual data or their feature maps. These methods also may change the representation, representation ability and reduce the discriminative information. Besides, it is not clear whether they benefit optimization or not. Okay, based on the lens of normalization in the machine learning community and the lens of local normalization in computer in computer vision community, here it is time to show the master target batch normalization. This is the forward algorithm of batch normalization. For each user and its mini batch input being addressed to normalize the activation of mini batch data for better conditioning following the motivation from the optimization. More importantly, being also addresses to back propagate through the transformation, like the local normalization methods, which can stabilize the training. Note that Backpropagation, backpropagation through the transformation is very important for stabilizing the training, and it and it spans half of pages in Bian's paper to show that why it is important. Please please refer to for details. Besides, Bian also rec rec recommend recommend man to use extra scale and bias to compensate the normalization. In case of normalizing activation actually constrains the model's representation ability. Normalization of the mini batch where why exploit the computational advantages of, of mini batch based gradient optimization. It obtains a good trade-off between computation cost and the optimization benefits. A large characteristic of BN is that it uses mini batch statistics for training, but using the population statistics for inference. This strategy ensures that the, the prediction can be execu executed over single examples and has deterministic results. The population statistics usually is calculated by running average, average during training or as estimated after the training is finished. The formulation of batch normalization is described based on the multiple layer perception. 
for, for better showing its motivation in optimization. Consider a convolution layer. Be an additional process the normalization to obey the convolutional property so that different, different elements of the same feature map at different locations are luminized in the same way. For example, here, the activation in this feature map is essentially the response of this region in the original Im image. Therefore, the spatial location can be viewed as an example following the convolutional property. In summary, given many batch convolutional input, we can jointly normalize all the activations in the mini batch of all locations as, de as de described here. VN can be wrapped as an independent module and plugged it in the neural networks, which, which is very convenient to use. In this slide, I, I briefly summarize, summarize VN's main properties and I will illustrate the elaborate in the theoretical property of VN in the third part of, the, of this tutorial. Okay, VN has great properties for the training of deep neural networks. The most important property is that it can accelerate training. For example, it can stabilize training positively. Or it is a weight scale invariant property. A network with BN is not sensitive for weight, weight initialization. Besides, as analyzed before, standardization has better conditioning. Therefore, one can train a new network with BN by using large learning rate and thus achieve faster convergence. Another important property of BN is that it benefits generalization. The main reason is that it introduces, it introduces the stochasticity, like dropout. Firstly, the normalized output de depends on the mini batch during training, for example. Here, for point x1, insert Iteration, we combine with minimized data like this. With batch normalization, the x1 were located in here. When combined with, with another mini batch data, with batch normalization, the x1 where has another re representation. Okay, so let's jump out. Besides, the stochasticity can also be caused by the discrepancy between training and inference. This is the casualty city. Sometimes may have the general generalization. A large possible reason for generalization is that it can contribute the models to learn environment representation, like the local countries normalization methods. Note that BN still faces several several issues in particular contexts. The inconsistent operation of BN between training and influence limits, limits its usage in complex networks, for example, recurrent neural networks. Second, BN suffers from the small batch size problem. It, it either increases rapidly, rapidly as the batch size becomes smaller. To address BN's weaknesses, weaknesses and further extend its functionality, plenty of work related to future normalization have been proposed. Here is the outline of the following works. We first propose a framework to dis describe normalizing activations as function methods and review the basic single mode normalization methods, which ensures that the the normalized output has a single mode distribution, for example, the Gaussian di distribution. We then introduce the approaches that extend single mode method to multiple modes, and then fuse and combine, combine different normalization methods. Lastly, we discuss the more robust estimation methods that address the small batch size problem of BN. In this slide, we first propose a framework to describe the normalizing activation of the function methods in algorithm 1 and review the basic signal normalization methods. 
We divide the luminescence activation as a function framework into three abstract processes. Uh, that includes luminescence area partitioning, luminization op operation, and the luminization representation recovery. We show that by using different AAP, NOP, NRR, we can conduct different luminization methods. Okay, let's take BN as an example. As illustrated before, BN regards each spatial position in the feature map as a sample. And the NAP is, is this formulation. Here, the second dimension indexes the set of samples used to compute the estimators. This means that the statistics are calculated along the batch, the height, and the widest dimensions. The NOP operation of BN is a standardization operation described here. The NR can be represented as this formulation. It uses the element-wise affine transformation. In the following slides, I will introduce normalization methods with different NAP. Here, the default, the default NOP is the standardization operation, and the NR is the affine transformation. As described before, the statistics of BN are calculated along the batch height and the widest dimensions. Layer normalization proposes to standardize the layer input within the neurons for each training sample to avoid the drawbacks of normalization along batch dimensions. Specifically, normalization statistics of LN are calculated along the channel height and wide, widest dimensions. LN has the same formulation during training and inference and is extensively used in NLP tasks. Group localization generalizes LN Dividing the neurons into groups and standardizing the layer input within the neurons for each group for each sample independently. By changing the group number, chain is more fle flexible than LN, enabling it to achieve good performance on visual tasks that limit limits to small batch size training. Batch group normalization expand, expands the, the group mechanism of GN from being over all the channels to being over both channels and batch dimensions. BGN also normalizes over batch dimensions and leads to estimate the population statistics. Similar to BN, however, the group mechanism adds examples for normalization, thus relieving the small batch size problem of BN to some degree. Note that this normalization method can also have the formulation for MLP with two dimensional inputs. Okay, here we, intu we introduce some normalization methods, which is specific to convolutional inputs, which is motivated for visual task for visual data. For example, instance normalization proposes to normalize each single image to remove instance-specific contrast information. Due to its ability to remove star information from the inputs, instance normalization is widely used in image style transfer tasks. Position normalization standardizes the activations at each position independently across the channels PN is, is it is designed to deal with the spatial information and has the potential to enhance the performance of generative models. Range normalization is more like a, is more like a general extension from position normalization, where it standardizes the activation across the channels and the sort of server region of the spatial, spatial positions. Region normalization is designed for the image impeding tasks.
In the following part, I will introduce the normalization methods using different normalization operations. Unless otherwise stated, the NAP is our batch dimension, and the NR is the alpha transformation. Huang et al. proposed the decorrelated batch normalization, which extends beyond to batch whitening. Here is a comparison between batch standardization and batch whitening. We can see beyond ensures the luminized output has the property of that its diagonal of the covariance quar matrix is O1. BW fills the required all the covariance quar matrix covariance matrix or the identity matrix. And this view improves the condition of standardization, which is discussed before. Here is the forward path and the backward path of the de decorrelated batch normalization method. One main challenge for external standardization to whitening is how to back propagate through the inverse square root of matrix, which uses the eigenvalue decomposition. This can be achieved by using matrix differential calculus, which is why explored in Unosico et al.'s work. One interesting question is the choice of how to compu compute the whitening matrix. Um, PCA based BW, for example, this formulation suffers significant instability in training deep neural networks and hardly convergent. Due to the so called, so -called stochastic X swiping, zero phase com component analysis, that is ZCA whitening, has been shown to avoid the SAS issues. Well, the PC whitening input is rotated back by the corresponding rotation matrix. It works next stretch or compress the data along the corresponding direction of the eigenvector. This whitening achieves better performance over standardization that is used in the end, and discriminative classification tasks. Even though Batch widening improves the condition of the optimization. There are also some problems of batch widening, especially the widening is all the dimensions. One problem is the computation cost. The second problem is the fully widening operation provides all much constraints on the widened output. The third problem is the difficulty in estimating the population statistics, which requ requires much batch to work well. To relieve this problem, one method is used to use group-based batch whitening, where features are divided into groups and the whitening is performed within each one. These methods can well control the extent of the whitening and balance the advantages and disadvantages of batch whitening. The last method to control the extent of batch whitening is using the Newton's iteration to calculate, calculate the whitening matrix. It also improves the computational efficiency and the numerical stability of this whitening. Since it can avoid egg decomposition or SVD by employing Newton's iteration for approximating the whitening matrix, Here shows the advantages and the disadvantages of BW. One advantage is that BW has better conditioning of BN theoretically. Secondly, BW pro probably has better general generalization the amplified stochastic by controlling the extent. The disadvantages are that the computational cost is, is expensive and there is numeric instability. This problem can be well relieved by using different methods to calculate or approximately cal calculate the whitening matrix. For example, using use Newton's iteration or, or using Chernesky decomposition. Another disadvantage is that BW has more difficulty in 
ensure the training and inference uh, consistency. Indeed, this problem can be avoided by using group writing, which exploits the advantages of writing and avoids the disadvantages of normalization of batch. Note that group writing is different to group-based BW. For group writing, the writing operation is performed, performed on a sing, single example, while group-based BW is still performing the normalization of batch dimension. There are several variations of the standardization operation for luminizing the activations. As an alternative to the L2 normalization used to control the activation scale in a bin layer, for example, the L1 norm, the L infinity norm, and the more general L2 norm. L1 and L infinity norm normalization can improve the numeric stability in a no precision impact implementation, as well as provide computation and memory beneficial of L2 normalization. The merits of L1 normalization originate from the fact that it avoids the costly square and root oper operations of L2 normalization, which is friendly under the no pre precision set setups. Note that if one plans to use an L1 normal to replace L2 normal, one extra scale, that is SQRT pi over 2, is needed to maintain the magnitude of L2 normalization in the information propagation. As, as stated before, the standardization operation usually includes centering and scaling. However, some works only consider one or the other for specific situations. Note that either standing or scaling along the batch dimension can benefit optimization. Besides, the scaling oper operation um, is important for scale environment learning and has been shown useful for adaptively adjusting the learning rate to, to stabi stabilize training. For example, though the mean square level normalization, fitness response normalization, Pixel normalization all use the scaling operations. Here, we also show the corresponding normalization methods by using the standardization operation. For example, Pixel normalization and position normalization both estimate the statistics of the channel for each position, but Pixel normalization uses the scaling opera operation, while position normalization uses standardization operation. Note that this sixth normalization all do not perform the normalization of batch dimension. Here, we illustrate the method that uses different normalization representation recovery. It is pointed out in Bian's paper that normalization constraints the distribution of the activations and these constraints may, ha may hamper the representation ability. So an additional affine transformation is usually used to recover the possible representation. This is one motivation of why there is an extra affine transformation following the normalization operation. Another very important benefit from NRI is that it can edit the statistic distribution, which is widely used in the new state transfer and the conditional generator tasks, which we will elaborate in the application of normalization part. For example, if an image has a statistic distribution A, we can use normalization to remove this statistic information. Furthermore, if we add the statistic information B from another image, we indeed added the statistic, statistic, statistical distribution of an image. Here, we indeed perform neural style transformation that we remove A style by NOP and as B style by NRR. Similar idea can also be used for domain adaptation when given a set of images. Note that this is just the 
high-level motivation, this is not rig rigor rigorously proved for how to edit this, the, the, the statistic, the style or something. Okay, Ex expect using the Hibbani transformation for NRR. There are methods using the more general linear layer as NRR. This operation is also called color color transformation if the NOP uses the whitening operation. The main motivation is that the covariance matrix of the image can represent the style information. Therefore, the whitening and color transformation can well edit the style information of the image. In the pre previous methods, the NRR parameters are both knowledgeable through backpropagation. Several work have attempted to generalize these parameters by using a high flight work to dynamically generate them, which is formulated of this formulation. For example, Kim et al. proposed the dynamic layer normalization in the LSTM architecture for speech recognition. Where the fine parameters are separately generated by the occurrence network feature extract subnetworks, which are jointly trained with the main acoustic model. Another work is adaptive, adaptive instance normalization for unsupervised image to image translation. Well, the subnetworks are multi layer perceptually. And the inputs of the subnetworks are the are the embedding features pro produced by one by one encoder. Ja et al. proposed the instance 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 never meta normalization, which optimizes on the encode decode subnetworks to generate the affine parameters, give the instance never mean and the variance as input. Besides, this method also combines the knowledgeable of fine parameters with the dynamic generated parameters. Rather than use the channel-wise of fine parameters shared across spatial positions, spatially adaptive denormalization uses the spatially dependent beta and the gamma, which are dynamically generated by a two-layer CNN with raw images as inputs. Note that here, the gamma and the beta are three-dimensional tensors, including the height, widest dimension. The mechanism for dynamic generated a fine parameter resembles the squeeze excitation block when the input of the subnetwork is X itself. Inspired by this, Nyang et al. proposed instance enhancement batch normalization, which com combines the channel wise affine parameters and the instance specific channel wise affine parameters with SE NAC subnetworks. With fewer parameters, IEBN can effectively regulate noise by in introducing instance specific information for BN. This idea is further generalized by a tensional normalization proposed by Li et al. Well, the affine parameters are molded by K mixture components. These, these attention-based normalization methods will improve the performance of the arrangement of BN network. Other, other interesting methods are in, injecting the side information into the, into the NRR. The idea is widely used for conditional general, general, generative models. For example, Germany et al. proposes conditional instance normalization for neural scan transfer tasks, where the style information is encoded in the affine parameters 
One can use different style by provi providing different values of affine parameters. Similarly, various at a proposed conditional batch normalization, which, which inject, inject a linguistic input, for example, a question in the VQ task into the affine parameters of BM. We have discussed using normalization to obtain a distribution with a single model. Here, we will introduce the method that extends to multiple modes, as well as conventional methods. Look at a proposed model normalization, which extends the normalization to more than one mean and variance to address the heterogeneous nature of complex data sets. MN is formulated in a mixture of experts framework, where a set of simple data functions is introduced to assign one example to groups within with a given probability. Each sample in the mini batch is then normalized on the voting from its data assignment. The data functions are trained jointly by backup propagation. Since different normalization strategies have different advantages and disadvantages for training different neural networks, some methods try to combine them. New ITR proposed the switchable normalization, which combines three types of st statistics. Estimated channel wise, neural wise, and mini batch wise by using by use instance normalization, neural normalization, and batch normalization respectively. Switch normalization switches between the different normalization methods by, by learning their, their impo importance weights computed by the softmax function. Switch normalization was designed to address the learning to normalization problem and obtains good results on several visual benchmarks. Pan ATL proposed a switchable whitening, which provides a general way to switch between different, different whitening and the standardization methods under the SN framework. Some ATL introduced the Example normalization to investigate a dynamic learning to normalize, normalize problem. Example normalization knows different data dependent normalizations for different image samples. While example one, while switchable normalization fixes the importance ratio for the entire data set. Indeed, example, example normalization also exploits the Instance statistics for particular image during inference. Similar ideas are also used are also used in represent, representative batch normalization, where the mini batch statistics and instance statistics 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 are used for normalization during training. Besides, it uses the population statistics and instance statistics for normalization during infer, during inference. Consider that I am can learn style invariant future. Nam et al. introduces batch instance normalization to normalize the style adaptively to the task and selectively to individual feature maps. It allows to con control how much of the style information is propagated through each channel by leveraging a knowledge of gate parameters to balance between IN and BM. A similar idea was also used in the adaptive, adaptive layer instance normalization for image to image translation tasks. Where a lot of gate parameters is also leveraged to balance between layer normalization and instance normalization. Besides, here, the gamma and beta is generated by a network. Rather than designing a compilation normalization module, Pan ITL proposed the IBM Net, which carefully integrates IN and BN as, as building blocks and can be 
wrapped into several different networks to improve their performances. For example, Pan et al. investigated multiple variants of IBM Net and found both can improve the performance of the arranged BN counterparts. Liu et al. searched for compilation or normalization activation layers using auto machine learning, leading to the discovery of Evolumos. A set of new normalization activation layers with sometimes surprising structures that go beyond the exist existing design patterns. Evolum merges the normalization and the following nonlinearity in the universal representation by such the possible operations. As illustrated in previous sections, being introduced is inconsistent inconsistent normalization operations during training and inference. This means that the upper layers are trained on representations different from those computed during inference. These differences become significant if the batch size is too small, since the, esti the estimates of the mean and the variance become less accurate. Besides, the dependence on the mini batch also introduces the large stochastic system. When batch size is small, this needs to significantly degenerate the performance. To address this problem, some normalization methods avoid normalizing along the batch dimension as introduced in previous sections. Here, we will discuss the more robust estimation methods that also address this problem of BN. Dean et al. was the uh, first to experiment with batch normalization using population statistics, which were weighted average of the old population statistics and current mini batch statistics. The experimental results demonstrated that combining population and mini batch statistics can improve the performance of BN in small batch size scenarios. I propose the batch renormalization. Augmenting the normalized output for each user with an affine transformation described here. Well, the R and the D is defined in these two formulations. Note that R and the D are bounded in the range described here. R max and D max are predefined hyperparameters. Besides, R and D are treated as constants when performing gradient computation. Note that if R and Z are between their bounded values, batch renormalization is reduced to standardizing the activation using the population statistics, which ensures that the training and the inference are consistent. Otherwise, batch renormalization implicitly exploits the benefits of mini batch statistics. There are a bunch of works recently that perform normalization as functions by combining population statistics of BN. This is the list of these papers. Please drive to the corresponding papers for details. Here, one question is that why so many papers propose to use the population statistics for relieving the small batch size problem of BM, rather than use other normalization methods, for example, group normalization or layer normalization. One main reason is that BN can be merged into the mini layer during the inference, which does not introduce any extra computation cost, while other instance level normalization definitely introduces extra cost during inference. Some works address the, also address the small batch size problem of BN by finally estimating correctly the normalization statistic, statistics during inference only. This strategy does not affect the training scheme of the model, which is therefore more convenient for use. In fact, even the orange BN, paper recommended estimating the population statistics after the training has finished. This policy is also advocated
investigated in the switch globalization methods problem and also investigated in this paper. Then at the analyzed how a small batch size hampers the estimation accuracies of BN with running averages and proposed volume, which optimizes the sum the sample weight during inference to ensure that the activations pro produced by normalization are similar to those provided during training. Okay, next we will introduce the method to normalize the weight. By normalizing the weight, we can normalize the activation implicitly based on the forward process. The general idea of normalizing the activation in infinitely by normalizing the weight is from the normalization propagation, propagation paper. This method only normalizes the input and assumes the weight W is orthogonal. They derive the nonlinearity dynamics, for example, estimating the mean and the variance after the random activation. By doing that, they can achieve the desired distribution approximately for each layer. Some methods also propose to design nonlinearity to maintain the desired distribution. However, these methods are limited to the assumption of the weight. For example, the weight should be orthogonal. The estimated distribution of activation will not be accurate with the layer increasing. One famous method to normalize the weight is weight normalization. This method targets to be in the drawbacks, for example, the is unstable for small mini batch size and it's not convenient to use it in recurrent neural network. Weight normalization expresses the weight as new parameters and is a reparameterization method. It decouples the direction and length of weight vectors. Following the idea of weight normalization method, Juan et al. proposes the standard weight normalization method. This method is motivated by initialization method. For example, many initialization methods are just to use zero to mean and stable variance, such that different layers have the same variance in the initial stage. This method fuses applying this intu intuition during the training, which is formulated as the constrained optimization problem. The authors also use the reparameterization method to solve the constrained optimization problem. At our view, the proposed orthogonal weight normalization method, which, motivated, which motiv is motivated by the orthogonal initialization method. There are one good property for orthogonal matrix. It can make sure the preactivation has the same norm as the input and the gradient of the input has the same norm as the gradient of the preactivation. Learning the orthogonal filter during training can be viewed as a constraint optimization problem of multiple steep field manifold. And these steep field manifold are dependent. To solve the optimization problem, the reparameterization method are proposed to con construct an orthogonal transformation based on the progress parameters and gradient information are back propagated through the orthogonal transformation. Noting that, minimize the distance between the progress parameters and the weight parameters is essential to make the method success in, in the external rating training. Generally speaking, normalizing the weight, weight methods can be viewed as constrained optimization problem especially constrained on the server manifold in the original space. Here, we list the, the corresponding constraints impo imposed on the weights. For example, weight normalization requires the normalized weight of the unit length, and the standard weight normalization requires the mean and the unit length constraints for the input weights. This is also the same as the scale, scaled weight standardization. The weight standardization requires the input weight has the zero mean property and its length is the square root of output dimension. Note that 
Weight standardization cannot effectively preserve the activation statistics between different layers. Since the weight norm is the square root of the output number of channels, which may cause exploding activation, therefore, WS usually needs to be combined with activation normalization methods, for example, the batch normalization or group normalization, to remove this issue. It is it is clear that training a deep neural network with constraints imposed on the weight is a constraint optimization problem. Here, we summarize three kinds of strategies for solving this problem. One stable way to solve constraint optimization problem is to use a reparameterization method. Reparameterization constructs a linear transformation phi of the proxy parameters V to ensure that the transformed weight W has third beneficial properties for the training of the neural networks. Gradient update is, is, is executed on the pro, pro, proxy parameter, parameter V by backpropagating the gradient information through the normalization process. Some works have tried to maintain the weight constraints using an additional penalty on the objective function, which can be viewed as an regularization. This regularization technique is mainly used for training the weight matrices with orthogonality constraints for its efficiency in computation. A weight matrix W with constraints can be viewed as an in embedded sub manifold, for, for example, a weight matrix with an orthogonality constraint is a rare, rare stiff field manifold. One possible way of maintaining this constraint when training deep neural network is to use a remaining optimization. Okay, here we summarize the advantages and the disadvantages of normalizing the weight methods of activation normalizations. The main advantages of normalizing over rates are more efficient during inference. There are low extra memory or computation, computation cost during inference. Besides, they are not sensitive to the batch size compared, compared to batch normalization. The disadvantage of normalizing the weight is that the training is not stable compared to activation normalizations. Because they only can implicitly control the activations and usually require certain assumptions. Besides, it is too it is to wide design the gain parameters for satisfying criteria one, you know, to ensure the variance are are equal or among different layers. So the gain parameters depend on the network architecture. For example, Huang et al. considers a feed-forward network without residual connections, and Brock et al. considers a more difficult residual network architecture. Therefore, it is more difficult to use in practice. In the last, we briefly introduce some methods to dominate the gradient. Rather than providing a good optimization landscape by design, normalize gradients in deep neural networks aim to exploit the curvature information for gradient or stochastic gradient. Even though the optimization landscape is ill conditioned, it performs normalization solely on the gradients, which may effectively remove the negative effects of uh, over the ear conditioned landscape caused by the diversity in magnitude of gradients from different layers. Generally speaking, normalizing gradient is similar to second order optimization or coordinate wise adaptive learning rate based methods, but with the goal of exploiting the layer wise structure information in deep neural networks. We Atwell was the first to propose block-wise or layers-wise gradient normalization for training deep neural network to front the gradient explosion or vanish problem. Specifically, 
The performance gaining over the gradients with respect to the weight in each layer ensuring the norm to be unit norm. This technique can decrease the magnitude of a large gradient to a certain level, like gradient clipping, and also boost the magnitude of a small gradient. However, the net gain of this branch that generates in the scale environment given the networks, for example, with batch normalization. They also propose an extra ratio factor that depends on the norm of the nail wise weight was used to was used to adaptively adjust the magnitude of the gradient. A similar idea was also introduced in the nail wise adaptive greater scaling methods proposed by Yo et al. for large batch training. NAMBO and NANS fuse extends NAS for large scale batch bird training. NAS and its follow up works are essentially techniques in training large scale deep neural networks using large batch sizes. Significantly reduces the training times without, without the degre de de degradation of performance. Rather than using the scaling operation, Jung et al. recently proposed a gradient centralization, which performs a century of the gradients with respect to the input weight of each neuron in each layer. Gradient centralization implicitly imposes constraints on the input weight and ensures that the sum of elements in the input weight is a constant during training. Gradient centralization effectively improves the performance, performances of deep neural networks with activation normalization, for example, batch normalization or group normalization. Okay, we have reviewed the related normalization methods, including normalizing the activation weight and the gradient in the next part, we will show a more theoretical analysis for normalization methods and application of normalization methods for various tasks. Okay, let's have a break. Is there any question?